awesome flakeless hair you don't have to think about, leaving your mind free to wander. Head and shoulders, respect the scalp, get the hair. How much sugar is in these energy drinks? Let's find out. While waiting, you should know. 5-Hour Energy contains zero sugar and only four calories. Its blend of B vitamins and amino acids can help you feel awake, alert, and productive for hours without the crash or jitters. The answer is 12. Over 12 teaspoons of sugar and 200 calories in these energy drinks. Zero sugar and four calories in 5-Hour Energy. There's a reason people choose 5-Hour Energy two and a half million times a week. 5-Hour Energy. Hours of energy now, no crash later. The Memphis lead is 35 points on the Houston Cougars. Antonio Anderson was scoreless at the half. He is scoreless no more. He is our icy hot sharpshooter. Eight points, now nine, eight points, nine rebounds, five assists for Anderson. Doing it every which way in the open court and the half court offense, the pack in the rim. Plus he plays great defense, he rebounds, assist man, he does it all. He's a winner, he's a leader. Well, Antonio Anderson had a triple-double earlier this year against Lamar. He is only the second player in Memphis history with a triple-double. He had 12 Robert points, 10 rebounds, 13 assists against Lamar, and he is not too far off from a triple-double. And how about the free throw shooting performance today from Robert Dozier? That is now 8 of 9 from the line. He has more made free throws than Houston has attempted. Right, you know, he's doing a great job. He's stepping it up as Mosley. Getting frustrated. That attempt there with the uh, Dozier. He didn't pound the card by 37 points. Get frustrated. Dozier is going to sub out of the game as some of the Memphis starters are going to get a good break. 239 straight games with a 328 for the Houston Cougars. They have not made one today. 0 for 12. Oh. And you have to have a leg starter, as you know, in first three, and their legs are shot right now. Rims are not forgiving. You've got to swish. Not going to give you much on these rims. You've got to have dead in the middle. Last time Houston didn't make a three was the 2001 Conference USA tournament. Mac. Swatting Aubrey Coleman from behind. Not only has Houston not made a three, they haven't made a basket in the second half. Of course, there are two days left to go in the Bass Pro Shops countdown to Selection Sunday. Over 12 from the floor in the second half. John Calipari saying yesterday, if it wasn't for our defense, we would have lost the game. I don't think that's true today. The Memphis has played an all-around solid game. But you go to the quarterfinals against Tulane, where the Green Wave went 16 minutes without a field goal. Now here it is, the second half. Houston was hot at the end of the first half. They have been ice cold in the second half. Tremendous defense. Memphis is long, they're athletic, they play hard, really motivated, so I think they're the best defensive team in the country, even better than the Lakers. second half for Houston, Kelvin Lewis finishes. And a chance for the three-point play. Calhoun is very good off the dribble. He loves to penetrate. He gets into the rim and he can finish when he wants. Also dish. Nice attack, very unselfish. Kelvin Lewis with the finish. Dribble penetration. Memphis does best. Houston finally got to the rim. It's a tough rims card here. Once again, NBA rims are all tight and taut. They have a certain four. So you've got to be swish. I think Houston have a three or four today spun out. So. Not real forgiving. When you dunk it like Memphis is, doesn't matter. So Memphis ranked number three. There are a lot of factors that go into who's going to be the number one seed in the NCAA tournament. 
tournament. Like I said, North Carolina tonight is not going to be there. Maybe a couple of them potential that we'll have seen just as a UConn kid. But who is that number one seed? Certainly John Calipari has spent the past week lobbying for better consideration for Conference USA as a whole. Not just for his team, but better respect for the league. Despite the fact that Memphis is rolling through the game. But also part of that lobbying effort by Coach Calipari, who was, by the way, a marketing major in college, is that Memphis should be a number one seed. Now, here would be some of the other potential number one seeds. Memphis is very close, Clark, but I'm going to go with Louisville because they're the regular season champs of the Big East, which is arguably the best conference in the country. Oklahoma slipped a little bit. Michigan State's very good, but the Big Ten is, is not great this year. We're going to have a lot of teams. Memphis is close. I'm going to go Louisville by the high level. How about the fact that John Calipari six times has led teams into the Elite Eight, and all six of those times, Two seeds. So he knows the importance of that seeding in the NCAA tournament. I don't think it's a giant difference between number one and number two seed. It's who you play and where you play. With each one. Now he's won it out by Horace from Boston. So you think that if Pitt, UConn, and Louisville all get number one seeds, that's three number one seeds from the same conference, the Big East. That's what I think right now, Clark. Louisville, how can you keep them out now? with winning the regular season of the Big East Championship. We're going to talk about the, the body of work. Well, hey, maybe the best league in the country there, 16 and 2. Pitt certainly has an argument. Memphis is right there, right there. I think it's decided before these tournament championship games. Go. I mean, I think they go for the body of work. I don't think the postseason conference tournament are, you know, factored in quite as much as some people believe. Count that bucket for Aubrey Coleman. To follow up on that point, we've Heard from Mike Slide a couple of times this week, the head of the selection committee, of course, commissioner of the SEC. And that's kind of one of his points of emphasis of saying, look, those November and December games count. That isn't just an exhibition schedule. We can't get caught up in what happens at the end of the year, dictating how we see this tournament it has to be your entire resume, your body of work. Exactly. You can't erase a whole season's work in just three days. Marcus Cruzon and Houston after going over 10 minutes without a made basket in the second half has made back-to-back -back baskets. Now, obviously, this game is more or less decided for the Memphis Tigers. I think we can go ahead and project the win in the Conference USA semifinals here in Tennessee. A lot more relaxed when you're up 30 or down 30. Cruzon's had a real good year. He's played very well against everybody except the Tigers. Will step back jump shot. Right in Padilla, Henderson Niles is mugged. Feels better now with Dozier and Tiger down the game. A little more confident. Good playing time here for Chance McGrady, the third member of that senior class. This is McGrady down the baseline. He gives it up to Robert Sally, who can't finish. McGrady there for the rebound. McGrady kicks it out to Willie Kemp. <laughs> Throws it off the duel of Pierre Henderson Niles. <laughs> Big fella. Again, Willie's unselfish, but shoot the ball. If you're in the air, you got to shoot the ball. You jump in the air, don't jump in the air to pass. This is a five on the floor that Memphis does not usually use. Billy Kemp, Wesley Witherspoon, Robert Sally, Pierre Henderson Niles, and Chance McGrady. And yes, Chance is the cousin of Tracy McGrady. Good move by Coach Calipari. Game decided, right? Rest you guys for tomorrow's final. Morris McLaughlin for three. Houston is 0 for 13 from behind the arc. Sally out of control going to the hoop, but follows his missed shot for the offensive rebound. John Calipari says, Willie Kemp, please pull it out and reset us into a half court offense. You're a coach like this, or you're winning or losing, it's going to be over. You don't want a guy to get hurt on either team, especially if you're winning, because you're going to gain tomorrow. If you're losing, this is a nightmare. Tom Penn has done a terrific job with his team this year. I think it's the best team he's had. It's Bennett Houston. They've not shown that today, of course, but he did a great job with his club. And, uh, they had a very fine season. I think they got a good chance to go to the high school. 21 and 10, the record for the Houston Cougars. They finished fifth in the regular season. Again, they beat Utep last night. It was the first season. And Zamal Dixon makes the first the streak will continue. They were in danger of going the entire game without a three for the first time in eight years. But Zamal Nixon finally knocks one down. Oh, the talented point guard for the Brooklyn Boy 
Boys and Girls High School, and first team All City. So, very good players. Only a sophomore has a great future. He's Tom Bender is praising the way Nixon has stepped up his game as a sophomore when we spoke to Coach Bender last night. Here, Henderson Nile is missing over Kuzon, and Marcus Kuzon, the senior out of Baltimore, clears it. Nixon tries another three. Boulevard, Tennessee, who teamed with Wayne Chisholm in one of the great high school teams in Tennessee basketball history. Wayne Chisholm, of course, now with the Tennessee Volunteers. Witherspoon fouled on the way, going to the hoop. Willie can attack the rim. He goes to the cup. Nice step back for Willie. Anybody home? How you doing, big guy? I was hit by a bus. Other than that, no complaints. I know you can't hear me, but I want you to know I'm moving Jack in the Box forward. Okay. I'm telling the world we serve anything on the menu anytime. Yay, yeah, Phil. And I'm changing the company name to Fill in the Box. Fill in the Box? I don't think so. Somebody find my pants. I got work to do. Your Buick Pontiac GMC dealer wants you to know when it comes to efficient performance, facts are facts. The 361 horsepower G8 GT beats BMW 550i 0 to 60 and still offers better highway fuel economy. G6 offers 33 highway MPG and beats Honda Accord. Last month, thousands took advantage of great financing. Now get 0% APR for 60 months or 3,000 total cash back on the 2009 Pontiac G8. Find a dealer at bpgdealers.com. things in your world. Spend some time in ours. It's Memphis up 32 points as we recap with our AT&T game summary of this Conference USA semifinal. Tough task for Houston to come back after an overtime quarterfinal game, third game in three days. And certainly it has favored the Tigers a 27 to nothing run as part of this monster second half. The Tigers get out of the break. They love to finish. They love to run. The Duncan, it's their show right now. Tiger, Tiger, burning bright. Keats reference there. Memphis has opened up this 32-point edge on the Houston Cougars. 32 to 12 scoring margin in the second half, favoring the Memphis Tigers. This is the third straight game where they have held an opponent over 10 minutes without a field goal. Two lane twice into the regular season, then in the quarterfinals, and now Houston in the semifinals of the Conference USA tournament. And it's another blowout win over a Conference USA opponent. Now, Pete, this is somewhat giving the league a black eye because the way that Memphis is dominating Conference USA. John Calipari among those saying, hey, the league is getting better, the teams are getting better. Don't punish everybody else just because we're whipping everybody. You can ask Rick Vaughn of Texas or Tom Dizzo of Michigan State last year when they ran into the Memphis Tigers. They got blown out. Uh, once again, the league getting better. The eight teams have increased and improved their RPI last year. As it always shown the card, but the league is certainly improving, but it's tough to catch these Tigers. Lewis gets uh, You know, amazing you look at last season, they were 33-1. They were considered a lot for a number one seed with that RPI of three. Now, this season, they're 29-3. All those numbers very similar, which is why John Calipari saying, hey, look, how about the number one seed this year? It doesn't matter that we started the year 63 right now deserving of a one seed. Certainly strong consideration, but three losses is different than one loss, Carter, as you know. And, uh, once again, they're right there. Right now, I'd say that it's a high ledge behind the three Big East teams and North Carolina. Calipari's message to his team is, it's not a time to be cool. Leave cool in the locker room is what he wrote on the dry erase board yesterday. He was not pleased with the way his team out, but he did it. Get a little bit of chilling out against Tulane. Here it is. 
Aldridge. Slow motion the first half against the Lane Carter, as you mentioned. But I thought they played as hard as they did all year after they got behind by four points early in the second half. They can turn it up two and three levels. Wednesday practice, John Calipari closed out with his team around him saying, Guys, we deserve to be here. We deserve to be in position to win another conference tournament because of the work we've done. We deserve to be in contention for a number one seed getting ready for the NCAA tournament as the nation's number three ranked team. He deserves strong consideration, Carter, and he thinks they can win it all because there's no great teams this year. There's some very good ones, but each one has a little flaw. Kelvin Lewis knocks Kelvin down the three. So a little late run from Kelvin Lewis after he was really a non-factor in this game. That's just his third made bucket. Gives him 12 points overall. Carter, with my premise now, what would be the Memphis' floor if they have any in your opinion? Would you say three-point shooting maybe be? Yeah, a little erratic. Last night, as you mentioned, one for 13. The night was better, but uh, that's one thing there. Outside shooting is not consistent. Well, Houston was hoping to zone him today and without the press legs, hoping Memphis missed from behind three-point. Now, they have some guys capable of it. Robert Sally is one of those as he demonstrates the three-point touch. But if you catch Memphis on an off day, you think that's maybe what we'll see some in the tournament? Yeah, hopefully not, but that's one of their things, weaknesses possibly where they're not consistent from three-point land. And, uh, I think that's the only thing. It's your inside, beat you off the dribble, great transition, unbelievable defense. Outstanding team. Hey, hey, hey. Too late, but Kelvin Lewis is heating up for Houston 15 to lead all Houston scores. Robert Dozier has 16 in the game. That leads all scores. Basically, three straight made three-pointers for Houston after the over 14 start. Deep in the Memphis bench now is you have Sally Henderson Niles, Chance McGrady, Willie Kemp, and Wesley Witherspoon. And certainly a couple of those guys get heavy minutes for Memphis. Robert Sally knocking down the three. The Memphis lead extended to 28 points. Oh, how much are these? No, oh, oh, those aren't for sale. Oh, I'm sorry. My mom's a little crazy about her antiques. Antiques? They're rollover minutes. Yeah, from like six months ago. But they're still good. You know, saving minutes saves money, and these days we can't afford to be wasteful. Not everyone gets to keep their unused minutes. Oh, cool. Uh, 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 uh. Beat it, kid. Only AT&T's Family Talk with Rollover saves your family's unused minutes. And saving minutes saves money. Get the touchscreen view for $49.99 after mail-in rebate. Only from AT&T. Oh, and this one is tied up. Time up, Boston. <laughs> Man, I wish this game would never end. Hey, send it into overtime. Yeah, no problem. It's the pass up to Hampton for the win. Oh! Buffalo Wild Wings, you have to be here. Oh, my! So you've won your first big tournament. Now what? Stock up for the next one. It's the final days of the Bass Pro Shop Spring Fishing Classic, our biggest sale of the year. Don't miss these one-day-only specials. Thursday, save 65% on Cordell Super Spots. And Friday, the XPS Dual Purpose 150 battery is only $69.94. Your total comes to $123.52. They're the kings of taunts, the sultans of slams, the world's greatest hecklers. They follow Pete and I to every game. You can find out their secrets and hear the story of how they became heckling royalty on Heckle You, presented by Head & Shoulders, a new online series on CBS.com. Coming up next, it's a CBS College Sports Desk with Adam Zucker from our New York studios to get you caught up on everything from around the conference tournaments. North Carolina survives a scare from Virginia Tech, another of those potential one seeds, Michigan State getting past Minnesota. Kentucky beat by LSU, the regular season champ. And the SEC takes care of the Wildcats, and that will likely end Kentucky's NCAA streak. Real long streak, and uh, didn't have a point guard this year for him. Had some talented players, but that's the most important position on the court, in my opinion. Distribute the ball, run the offense, be a coach on the floor, and Kentucky didn't have a high-quality point guard, unfortunately, this season. 
Chance McGrady hits both of his free throws. That is point number 10, point number 11 for Chance McGrady in his senior year. Big round of applause now as Preston Laird, the other Memphis walk-on, gets ready to check in. Three two zone that they're going to use a little bit in the NCAA tournament party. We were practicing today, right? And they were working on that. Cal was talking about their length. Probably ten times did John Calipari say, "All right, guys, why are we practicing the zone? Because of our length. All right, why are we a great defensive team? Because of our length. That's clearly the emphasis." And they have worked on that three two zone, especially in the second half of the regular season. With the six eight for Wesley Witherspoon at the top of that three two. You can't see, you don't have good side angles because they're so long and lean and athletic and they play so hard. Robert Sally misses the three the rebound for Horace McLaster and Houston brings it back. Two minutes to go in semifinal number one. It will be Memphis moving on to the Conference USA Championship for the fifth consecutive season. They have won it the last three years. Memphis is 18 and 1 at home this year. And the team to beat them is your alma mater, Syracuse University. But 18 and 1 at home and trying to get number 19 tomorrow morning. That was December 20th. The last loss for this team. Brought right out chance called for the hearts of himself. And Pringle rolls it in. So Paul Nixon was not happy that Aubrey didn't kick it ahead. Be sure to catch Warner Brother Pictures' new comedy, Observe and Report, starring Seth Rogen. The movie opens everywhere on April the 10th. I understand that Seth plays a mall cop, and there's there's some interesting um, exhibition that he has to deal with in that upcoming feature. Sounds very interesting, Bobby. You've got to be tuned. Preston Laird into the game for the Memphis Tigers. Preston Laird is the freshman from Germantown, Tennessee, on the east side of the greater Memphis area. One of the best barbecue spots in Germantown, Thomas. One minute remains. So it will be Memphis moving on to the Conference USA Championship. The question is, do they take on UAB or Tulsa? We'll find out in the second semifinal. As Pierre Henderson Niles dunks that one down off the feet from McGrady. Tom Penders, meanwhile, cheering on his team to close out strong, play with pride in the last minute. 40 minute game, you gotta play for 40 minutes. They can give up, they playing, they've had a very good season. Hopefully, they will look at the MIT. The reality for Houston is it's going to be a tough task to win for the third time in three days against the Memphis Tigers. They were hoping to catch that. Tiger napping. Instead, it was roaring today. So we will go ahead and mark this one down as a win for the Tigers. They will be the winningest senior class in NCAA history. 134 wins in a four-year period for Antonio Anderson, Robert Dozier, and Chance McGrady. Preston Laird with the crowd cheering for him to shoot. Instead, he gives it up to McGrady, who dumps it off. Shot clock violation, 1.6. Houston will inbound to make this one official. Somebody has to inbound it here to make this one unofficial. <laughs> this one, I'm not sure anybody Nobody wants to take it out. Sure. Nobody wants to touch it. Who's on? You have to touch the basketball. Please pick it up. Oh Marcus, please. Thank you. Count it. It's a two. 74 to 49 will be the final score. 24th straight win of the season for Memphis. Their 60th consecutive win over a conference opponent. Third ranked Memphis marches on to the Conference USA championship game. Our players of the game for the Houston Cougars, Aubrey Coleman, after a slow start, ends up with 14 points. Antonio Anderson, the scoring number's not incredible. All eight in the second half, but another solid all-around game from Anderson. He was great. A little bit of everything. He scored, he rebound, assists. He's a winner, he's a leader. He's one of the reasons why they have a special team. A 25-point win in the semifinals, 74 to 49. Memphis over Houston for producer Craig Silver, director Mike Arnold. Pete Gill and our entire CBS College Sports Network crew. I'm Carter Blackburn.
Memphis rolls on to the finals. We'll send you the CBS College Sports Desk in New York next. This is Conference USA, home to national champions, Heisman Trophy winners, national coaches of the year, Olympic medalists, and all Americans. We have teams that have played in 121 bowl games, the College World Series for baseball and softball, NCAA Soccer College Cup, and teams that have made Final Four appearances. Be there for the next big moment. This is Conference USA. Competition lives here. This March on CBS College Sports, anything can happen. My George, the dream is alive. Don't be here with the answer. Welcome to NCAA March Madness Central, powered by Pontiac. To do it the way they did it is absolutely an incredible story. Over 100 hours of action-packed NCAA tournament coverage. The corner, three-pointer ball down for Nice. It's a team that has something for everyone. Man, this is what it's all about. When they needed a bucket, he was there to answer. Break down the bracket with live in-game look-ins and much more. All right, it is time to tip things off. Catch all the in-depth coverage on the CBS College Sports Network, the cable home of NCAA March Madness. The CBS College Sports Network. He might take it all the way. What a hit. Pack it deep, and that one is hauled in. Now available in crystal clear HD. Welcome to Progressive's Concierge Claim Center. You must be Mr. Garcia. I was in a little fender bender. We have your reservation right here. Assess the damage, coordinate the repairs, and call you when it's fixed. And it all comes with your policy. Here's your rental. Can I see it again? Taking care of everything for you. Now that's progressive. Call or click today. The NCAA online store is the place to get all of your officially licensed collegiate championship gear and team apparel. With a huge selection of top brands, the NCAA online store is where you'll find jerseys, t-shirts, hats, polos, and more. The NCAA online store is where college sports fans get everything they need. Memphis over Houston, 74-49. Welcome, everyone, to the CBS College Sports Desk in New York City. Adam Zucker alongside Greg Anthony as we get set for our second game from Memphis, UAB, and Tulsa. But first, we got to go back to the Mecca, MSG, a place Greg Anthony knows very well. <laughs> One more look, Syracuse, UConn, all the rage because most people went to bed before it could end. And six overtimes. Could be the greatest Big East game ever played, really. I mean, six overtimes. And then remember also, Syracuse got to figure out a way to bounce back and go against a very good West Virginia team. But still, unbelievable night last night. Greatest game can be argued. Longest game <laughs> cannot be argued. Six overtimes. Let's take a look at this thing, huh? Syracuse, the six seed coming in against UConn. And Syracuse have eliminated UConn three of the last four Big East tournaments. Eric Devendorf. It would have been good if the UConn player hadn't touched that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was good, just doesn't count. No. Clocks read zero. Still on the fingertips when the backboard lights up. We were tied at that point, and so we go to the first of many overtimes. Seconds winding down here. Orange down to Johnny Flynn. Great pass to Rick Jackson for the dunk. Ball tied at 81. For the Huskies with a chance to win. Kemba Walker. Oh. No good. Going on to that second overtime, Johnny Flynn was just unbelievable in this basketball game. 34 points and did a great job of distributing as well. And the Syracuse guards really keeping them in this game. Seems like the entire front court fouled out. The other way, Walker with another crack at it and bounced off the rim. A go to a third overtime. Syracuse is Andy Routens, just like Leo would do, right? Yeah, knocks it down. And again, that's really been the Achilles heel of uh, UConn all night. They could not knock down a perimeter jump shot. That 2-3 zone gave them a lot of problems. And all they were getting were their perimeter chances. Syracuse got the interior penetration, but Paul Harris couldn't do anything with it. Well, it's a lot of good defense being played down there on the interior on that possession. Flashbacks to Charles Smith there, maybe, huh? Not quite. <laughs> not 
Go there. <laughs> Price can't hit. Jeff Adrian can't hit.